City of Fort Collins looks like they might raise taxes to buy themselves a high-speed internet system. Well, other cities have done it, and it's just wonderful. Well, let's find out. Ron Rizzuto from the University of Denver, thank you for being here. Appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Now, your job is you research telecommunications, infrastructure, all this stuff. So let, let me ask you from the general. It seems to me that internet access is becoming more and more a needed, almost utility. I mean, we need to have it. Most of our business is done this way. Communication is done this way. Entertainment's done this way. And so if a community decides to band together and say, you know what, let's just do it ourselves. Instead of going with this company or that company or everybody having to decide what their own little thing is, imagine if we all, since we all use internet, bought a beautiful system together. We could, we could put fiber optic cables throughout our whole community, just like we do with a water system, and everybody could, could have fast, cheap, reliable internet Longmont's done it, and people I talk to there seem pretty happy. What's wrong with it? Well, the problem is you, you're entering a uh, competitive business, and it's based on technology that's rapidly changing. Changing, So you can't just be do it once and be done. You have to do it nonstop here. What do you mean do it? What, what is it? I mean build a system. If you're going to put in a fiber network, you're going to put it in, but you need to continually upgrade it as the technology changes and the competitive con landscape changes. Let me see if I get an analogy that might uh, illustrate what you're saying. So f we had a phone company. It was Ma Bell. Ma Bell ran all the wires. And if you wanted phone service, you went through them. They were a regulated monopoly. They were almost a government. You know, um, they had to go to the government to get the rate increases. They had to give you a phone at a certain rate. They couldn't charge you more if you lived on the top of a mountain. Um, and then cable came. And cable said, wait a second, we got enough room on this pipeline. We can give you a phone, too. And all of a sudden, they, a private entity, could be as competitive, even more competitive with my phone service than the monopoly, the government-run monopoly, which was Ma Bell at the time. Are you telling me that the same thing happens when a city takes over and builds out its own, its own internet? That, that might be wonderful, but technology could change, and you might not need fiber optics. That's right. The technology changes, and you can't freeze the world. Your competition is going to change and up the stakes, so it's not a static environment. So if the environment changes, uh, let's say that um, Longmont has fiber optics and the community pays for it, it's a tax, you can sign on for very little cost, you can get this great deal on internet and it's fast, and then technology changes that there's a faster service that's privately given through the airwaves. Somebody has a satellite service or they figured out how to beam it in, and it's faster than what Longmont can, can do. And we never even thought about these things before, but let's say the technology gets there. What does Longmont have to do then? Do they just give up, or do they become a business competitor as if they're running their own competitive operation? Well, th that would be a choice that they would have to make. You know, some uh, take, for example, Groton, Connecticut is a good example. They put in their fiber or their their telecom system, you know, about 12 years ago, uh, and they were doing kind of okay. But then the competitive landscape changed. They couldn't. Uh, the only way they could keep the system going was to subsidize it. And at one point, they just said, "We're out of here. You know, we really? can't do that. We have other demands for money." So they sold the operation. You know, they had about. $35 million invested, and they sold the operation for less than a million dollars. Hang on a second. So taxpayers put in $35 million, lost $34 billion, million of it. Exactly. And simply because this is not like the sewer system. My guess is, tell me if I'm wrong, when you put in a sewer system, it's going to be close to the same sewer system two decades from now. The pipe underneath the street in front of your house is going to have a wastewater facility Maybe the pipes will get replaced, but they should hopefully last. And, and a competitor is not going to come and say, you know what, I'm going to take all, everything you flush and I'm going to get it away from you for a better price than, than what you're doing. That's correct. That's the, correct. That, that's correct. And the, the, different, you know, the other difference here is 
the municipalities that do this, they're used to the power and light and electricity business where they have the monopoly, where you're entering telecom and now you're, a, you're just one of several competitors. And even with that, it's changing. I mean, phone service was, at least in my lifetime, a monopoly, and then competition destroyed it. And I'm, I'm, and we're going to see at some point the same thing happen with electricity. In that electricity, we're going to have different providers that people might want to choose from. Other states like Texas allow you to choose your provider. It's, it's not forced upon you by where you live. So even that could be broken up. So how do you tell people, how do you explain to them that in the short run, this is going to be great. I mean, no, no doubt about it. You know, for the first few years, when you buy a new municipal broadband system, it, you're going to be very proud. And years later, it's going to be a problem. They don't want to hear that. Well, I mean, that's always the problem. You're, you're trying to caution people against the long term, as, and they're looking at what the short term is. And so that's always the challenge when you're trying to do that. But that's exactly the kind of argument that needs to be made. T tell me a little bit, have you looked at all at, at Longmont specifically? I have. And how's it doing and where's it going to go? Longmont has done, you know, pretty well. You know, they have been very thoughtful about what they've done. You know, they came in and they didn't go after video. It's just uh, high-speed data and telephone. Um, they've been fairly determined with it. And they have been able to, the way they've crafted the initial offer to uh, the citizens, you know, for 50 bucks forever, you get, you know, one gig of uh, speed. 50 bucks forever, 50 bucks a month forever? 50 bucks a month forever. Now they caution that subject to uh, the financial um, situation, but, but that's what it has been ever since they started. So the challenge will be, I mean, they are not cash flowing, but none of them do and they're, when they're building out. I think this year, 2017, they have finished the network, and now you're going to see more competitive environment there. So it then becomes a matter of, are they going to be successful? Are they going to be able to keep the penetration? So to? what's the risk to the taxpayer? That is, if they're going to start making money, then wasn't it a good thing to do? If they're going to start making money and paying it back, that's no problem. But if they are if they're not successful if they're running deficits in their cash flow then the risk to the taxpayer is or it's really the the power company because the electric utility revenues are backstopping the shortfall on the uh the telecom revenues All right so it's like every other game when government gets involved in what is a private industry sometimes it works out Sometimes it doesn't. When it works out, everybody's happy. When it doesn't work out, those people who made the decision are long gone and don't, don't have, have, the, have the problems. We've seen this with, with government running shopping centers and down in Littleton, the, the riverfront project, and all sorts of things where this is going to be a money maker. Uh, and you see government getting involved in what is traditionally a private enterprise. Yeah, and just to give you a little more specificity, I, I've been studying the municipal telecom area since 1998 and so I've looked at over 150 different ventures and I would say 75 percent of them fail um, and the recent study from the University of Pennsylvania they looked at 88 ventures you know 20 of which they had the separate financials on and of those 20 11 are running negative cash flows nine that are positive cash flow will uh, seven of them will never pay out um, within the next 40 years, and the others will, in fact, you know, it'll take 100 years for them to pay back. All right, you're, you're telling me that your own research, 75% of what long months around the state, have, uh, the country have done, fail. That's right. They, they run lose. negative. When, when right. you say fail, that means it costs taxpayers money. Right. And those people who, who get the service, the service is endangered as well. Oh, uh, well, they are sometimes the servers isn't endangered, you know, provided the city is willing to continue to provide money. What scares me is also then you don't see the full cost. 
So right. you might get a check, you might write your check for 50 bucks and go, ha, 50 bucks, my friends are paying 80 bucks to get it from Comcast. Uh, but you're not seeing all the other stuff that taxpayers are putting in to, 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 to make it even. Exactly. The, the, the key mistake most municipalities make is they price their service below cost. So obviously, you're in a perpetual subsidy situation. Well, you know, governments run the best businesses. <laughs> that's, that's why the post office does so very well. All right, we've got one minute left. Give us some advice to those people who will be looking at this in Fort Collins. Fort Collins is a sizable city. It's a growing city. It's a tech-friendly city. Uh, they want this, too. What is, what is your advice to them? Well, my, my advice to them is really look at and think before you vote in favor, because there you're voting in favor of a blank check. You're agreeing to obligate yourself for $150 million, the community for it, and then leave it to the the council to decide, do we do it? Do we do a retail model? Do we do a wholesale model? So I would just say it's too much risk and there's not the need there. Um, so I think it's bad public policy there. If there are people who do not have access to internet service, there are more efficient ways to do it than build a network. More efficient ways like give them a direct subsidy. Exactly. And I'm open to this, saying you need this, we can help you with it. Go into the marketplace and get what you need. Thank you so much. Thank you. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. Check out the Independence Institute. That's thinkfreedom.org. Tell a friend. We'll see you next week.